This wasn't beyond bash aliases and bash functions. Well, it doesn't have to be just bash. It can be ZSH or any uh, bash compatible shell. That's fine. But what is it for? Basically, it's a way to create your own commands or shorten up long ass commands, right? And uh, usually, if you see some of my uh, command line videos, I give you functions or something like that. And um, this is how you would use it. Uh, some people are asking me how the fuck do you use this or how you create one of these. It's actually a really good tip if you're new to the command line or you're a new uh, user that wants to learn more commands and stuff like that. Um, this is what I used when I was a, a fucking idiot and newbie to the command. So should help you out if you follow this here. Anyways, open up your home folder and hit Control H. Or if you're on KDE using Dolphin, is uh, out period. But you're looking for this file called um, .bashrc. If you don't have this file, that's fine. All you do is right click on here and then uh, create an empty file here. And name it exactly like that, right? .bashrc. And then you open this sucker with your text editor. Um, which uh, by default, they, they might have some things already. Like this one it has an, an alias for ls here, right? So what does this mean here? Basically when you type in ls, uh, it actually executes this command, but it's shorter, you know, typing just two letters instead of typing all this crap out yourself. So let me show you an example of that here. If you type in um, this whole thing here, it has colors with it, right? And you see that instead of typing all that, you type in just ls, it'll do the same thing. But normally, ls, without all that code and stuff like that, it looks like this. It's just, uh, you know, black and white here instead of colors. So that's when you type ls now, it has colors. That being said, they created their own command or they did a, a substitution. We can actually create our own command too um, with alias. And then we we'll give it a name that we want. Let's say um, we'll do something simple like hello equals... And then we do, um, well, the syntax is this, right? It's just uh, alias, um, what's that? Uh, give it a name, equals, and then you have uh, opening single quotes, or you can use double quotes if you want, and then closing, you know, that with another single quotes here. So, for example, we do echo, hello, YouTube. And we'll end it with a uh, single quote since we started out with uh, an opening one here, right? And we'll save this here. Now, once you save it here, uh, you still have to update your shell. Otherwise, if you execute this hello command here, it's not going to work. It says uh, command not found. That's because um, Bash doesn't know that you just update your shit. So one way to update here is type in Bash, which is the... Uh, not the proper way to do it, but it still works, right? And you hit enter. Now you reload your shell here. Uh, and now you can type in hello and it'll work, right? It'll just say hello YouTube. So the proper way to do it though is actually to type in source, um, what's that? Swing line slash dot bash rc, right? That's the proper way, but it's pretty long, so that's why not a lot of people use it. But we can actually create our own alias for that. So let's say we create an alias here. Reload um, bash rc file. And to do this, we type in alias. We'll call this one brc. And then we uh, type in that command here. Source bash rc. And close it. All right. And we should save this here. Save that sucker. And now. We'll do that for the last time. So whenever you did something, any changes in here, and you want to reload uh, your bash rc file, all you do is type in brc now, and that's how you would update it, okay? Or reload it, I mean. So that's that. And uh, oh yeah, another thing that I, I usually do when I was a, a new user, I was so fucking lame. I didn't know how to use um, a command line uh, text editor like Vim or anything like that. You can see how far I've been, you know, last time, uh, just a couple of years back, I was using a, you know, just GUI text editor, but now I know how to use Vim and shit like that. But, uh, how do you do this here for new users? 
and we'll call this one let's just call it um, edit BRC how about that and we'll say oh I'm using leaf pad oh what, uh, if you use on gnome you use uh, was it gedit or you on Katie is Kate and all that but I'm on XFC we're using leaf pad and basically you do something like this bash RC and you want these and sign at the end and that's to break it off from the terminal and I'll send it to the background so you can still use the terminal uh, and this is only applies if you're using um, was it, a GUI text editor that's why you use uh, the and sign here so save this sucker and we'll quit out of this and we'll reload it typing BRC here right and now when we want to edit something we do edit uh, BRC and that should open up with our uh, GUI text editor here right and we have this warning crap here that's fine you hit control C and you're back to normal and then I can hit control L to clear it and then you can use your commands like you know when you like LS here right so that's how you do that um, oh yeah some someone asked me last time on my feth video is that you know that shit it was too long how do you shorten it up so this is how you would do it here alias we'll just give it like two letters or something like um, FF or something right and we'll say FF oops opening actually you can do uh, instead of single quotes you can actually do double quotes too if you want so double quotes if you prefer that way but FF uh, we did like a white background so white and we want a geometry of, I don't know, let's say uh, 800 times 600, right? And uh, let's close it. And that's it. Oh, no, wait. Double quotes, I mean. Because we started out with double quotes. You want to end it with double quotes. And then that's it. Save it. And now we reload it here, BRC. And all you do is type in FF. And then uh, the pictures you want to open, like this one. Right, and you see that it has a white background and it's in uh, 800 times 600 geometry or resolution if you want. So you can see that uh, instead of typing all that crap out like we did last time, type in two letters. Pretty simple. Now with aliases, it's it's very limited. You can only do like maybe like one line or something like that. But with functions, you can actually do like a whole script if you wanted to. So functions are more useful. Aliases are still useful for some occasions, uh, mainly like substitution or something like that. But uh, functions is really what you would want to use. Okay. So to use functions here, so these are functions, and this is how it looks like here. One way to write it is a function, which not a lot of people use this crap anymore. But this is how you would write it: function and a name that you want. And then you want uh, opening brackets, and then your code is here, and you want to end it with uh, semicolon. I think that's what you say. It. And then uh, end it with the bracket. That's usually how it looks like. But normally people use is this. This is like the a lot of people use it this way now. Okay, it's just name, uh, open and close um, parentheses here, and then you do the same thing with uh, curly brackets code something like that and the last way which looks the same thing but this is mainly for like a long script or something and uh, you know like a block of code here right so all, any of these are fine but usually the ones that people use are, are this one and uh, that this one's like mainly for one-liners this one's mainly for uh, a long ass script here right but all of them are the same thing these are all functions so let's say for example how do you rewrite this one into a function right like this one um, function we'll use the second method which uh, we'll call it a name we'll call this one you don't want to call you know the uh, the same names as you already use like this one is, is ff right so let's say we call this one Pix or something. Uh, so make sure not to use the same names that you already uh, used it before because it will cause problems. 
uh, but we'll call this picks. And in here, we'll just use the same commands here. All right. Oops, what the hell? Copy the sucker, man. Copy, paste. And you want to end it with uh, that one and this one. And also, since we want an input, we also have to do a uh, dollar one or something like that. Because we have to type in, um, you know, an image uh, to give it to our commands here. So let's save this sucker. Save. And now let's do a BRC here again. And we type in uh, pics. And we pick out a image that we want. Like let's say uh, we have this Tron one here, right? There you go. That's how you use the functions with this, right? So it's the same thing here as this one, but a little bit differences. Like uh, you have to do like a dollar one or something like that for an input, and that's the only difference that you would have to do. And uh, the good thing about functions, like I said, is a, is a long script. So let me show you some examples I have at the bottom here. Um, for you guys so these are some of the aliases that you might see on a lot of configurations like this mount command instead of typing just uh, mount and then pipe into the columns you just type in mount only and this is uh, the NVLC I talked about in my NVLC video because I like it with no colors and uh, when I ever type this it will actually do the no colors uh, at the same time same thing with WeChat, you know, I hate, I hate typing WeChat dash curse. I just like to type, why I type in uh, WeChat only. Same thing with this. And CD here, it's, um, instead of typing CD dot dot, you just type in dot dot only. So for example, um, you know, you type in dot dot, it goes back a, a directory, right? So that's that. And here, this is another one. Um, I use YouTube Viewer. It's a really good program if you don't know about it. But, you know, if I want to search for something, instead of doing a uh, $1 that we did before, one input, this dollar uh, at percent or is it n percent sign here? Not n percent, I mean the at sign, right? This one means like an unlimited amount of uh, inputs because you don't know how many you're gonna type in so for example if I do YouTube uh, viewer not a viewer YouTube listen here right I can type in as many things as I want like I say I want uh, Dido thank you song right and it should find the Dido and I can play it if I want let's say hit one and I play it and there we go that's how you do that let's close out of that though so that's what that means. It means that it's more than one input. So this one is only one input. And this one is for um, Python help manual. So if I, if I type in PY, let me type in this shit again. What a, it looks weird. One second. There you go. Back to normal colors. But PY help here. And uh, I usually look up the help page for um, Python like this way. Because right now they have like Python 3 by default. And sometimes I need to look at Python 2.7 or 2 or whatever. So let's say for example I look at the math module. And there you go. I can look at the math modules really quick. Right. Um, and it's only a dollar one here. If you, if you type in more than one thing. Let's say I, I want math and maybe URL libs or something. Um, you see it only does the math. It, it skips out the other one. It just uh, it doesn't know because you only want one input in this one, so that's why a uh, dollar one there. Okay. Um, anything else? Well, some of these other ones I talked about already, like the calculator shit. You know, calculator, and then you type in like pi times eight or something, seven divided by eight, and so on and so forth, which I talked about a long time ago. This one is actually useful, uh, a useful function here. It basically, um, you know, look up command line foo. If you don't know what that is, is a site that posts command lines, and you can actually use that and add your own uh, command lines to this file, your bash rc file here. So, for example, if I want to learn how to do uh, uh, look up for reference like cmdfu, I want to learn how you do uh, mount 
ISO, how you do that. And you can see that here's some examples. Oh, this is how you mount the ISO. Uh, so basically, it parses that uh, command line foo.com and it, it gives you back in your terminal here. And you can look up other stuff like uh, burn ISO or something. So, you know, tell you how to do that. But be careful in here, not all commands are correct and uh, it's, just, it's only good for examples. You still have to know what the fuck you're doing. Okay, don't be an idiot. But uh, it's pretty useful. This one I use too, this is another function I use, is um, to check if the server is down or is it just me locally. So I can do like down for me and I can check if the youtube.com is down. And it says no, it's just you, youtube.com is up. So that's how I check that. And this one is for IP here to get my uh, internal and external IP which I'm not going to run because I don't want to show you my IP and, and they show you like MAC address and all that too so that's that and basically these are the say command I showed you last time for translation this is another example but yeah those are um, you know this one's a long it can actually be a script too right like I said and this one is just like a one liner um, and this one uses the functions thing here too as for example and this one, if you don't know, it's just a, a way to look at the Vim help page, but from your uh, your shell here. So if I do um, what is that the colon H here, I can look for okay, how do you jump? And it'll tell me um, you know from the man page how to do that. So basically, that's what the the commands are. So I'll post you these for examples if you want, but uh, just know like you know the format of how it works. Like okay, here's the name and then you have to have this stupid thing and this stupid thing in your code in here that's all you gotta know is the syntax and uh, as for the commands you can look up uh, some commands online and uh, do it yourself okay anyways that is it for this one uh, all these codes I'll post you in the description and hopefully now you know how to use the bash RC and create your own commands uh, so, or like shorten up your commands that you already have so you can remember that'll be it for this one pretty long video